So I think everyone had the ranges if you want to just check with mine. Okay, let's just do let's do loppers together and then uh, we're going to move on. We got to move on. So anybody think they got uh, a sample of 10 boxes of loppers that have the mean of 27 close to a mean of 27 and close to a standard deviation of 1.5? Anyone think they did it? Okay. Anybody think they, they're close? Willing to share? Yeah? Who wants to go for it? Okay. So tell me the tell me the boxes. I'm gonna put them. I'm gonna make a dot plot on my range. You don't you don't have to do this, but I'm just gonna show what his are. Okay, go. Okay. So for the first um, value of uh, the first data values, we know that about seven of the boxes have to fall within a range of 1.5. Right. Exactly. So so in the first range, first standard deviation away from the mean, you expect about 68 percent of the data. So you're saying seven boxes. Mm -hmm. Which so what were those boxes? 27. Just all oh, you want to make them all 27? Yes. <laughs> how about, so that's 7. So let's just, um, how many more possible uh, box numbers fall in that range? 26 and 28. So can we have a couple 26s and 28s too? So what do you want to do? So th maybe three 27s and then two 26s and two 28s. How does that work? 
and that puts 70% of the data in that first range. See what we're doing? Okay. All right. What, then what next? We got three more boxes to pick. What do we want? So then uh, we realized that it's not. We don't need to kind of forget about those seven boxes. Okay. And when you gave me a point seven, you only need to worry about your last three boxes. Sure. Uh, and then you kind of gave us a clue that you can't have half of the same candy or whatever. So they have to be um, integers. And Whole so number of candy. That's right. So with that. I just decided, well, there's not that many like integers here, so I just basically threw in uh, 29 and 25. Okay, so 25. And did those both fall into the two, two range? Yes. Okay. And those come out with a mean of 27 as well. Right. So we got it. So we're gonna pick our boxes so that. The center is 27, so it's are still doing good. Okay. And then I didn't, so this is where I got kind of stuck though. Okay, you're right. I didn't know what to do with the last box. Okay. So you want, you're saying you want to put it outside the two range, but then that's going to skew the, skew the mean. For is sure. that what you're saying? For sure. Okay, well, let's, let's do that. So do you want to make a, a box of lots of candy or a too low? Uh, too low. Oh. I prefer more, but go for it. You can have less candy if you want. All right, so how many in that last box? Uh, we could say like 23. 23. All right, now we just got to move another data point to offset that. So what can we do? So like we can make, see this one right here? We could like move it over, move it up here. And then that would kind of offset that. Just to see that? Or we could, we could, what was this? How, how many pieces was that? Twenty nine is thirty still in the range, so we could we could move that up. Can move we just move a couple up one and hopefully balance out the fact that it's twenty seven. Does that make sense? There's so it's it's this is not rocket. This is not exact science, right? We're just trying to see. So what he's saying is this last data point is going to skew the mean to the left, and we want that mean of twenty seven. Probably our standard deviation is really close here. Probably right around one point five because of we've got the right percentages of the data and the right, right, right intervals. But right now our mean is probably too low. So we could just take maybe, we could take this box with 27 and make it 28, and then this one from 29 and make it 30. And that would kind of counterbalance this, this one data point that's too low. So should we try that? So I'm gonna move this one that was at 27. Oh, that's really bad. I can't, oh, I cannot do that. So who, what would, let's just write them down. There was, uh, tell me what they were again. It was three twenty-sevens, two twenty-sixes. Okay. A twenty-five, a twenty-nine, and then the last one was? Twenty-three? And then we decided, okay, let's make this 27 another 28, and then make the 28 a 29. No, is that right? Make the 29, that's right, make the 29 a 30 to counterbalance. And So now, um, if you have, you can use StatCrunch, or if you've got a TI, I can show you how to do this on the TI too. We were doing StatCrunch. So if you've got a TI, get your TI up. Go to stack. Right there. Come on. Okay, so you go to go right here to stack and then edit. Okay, edit, which is just number one, and then it gives you the choice to gives you the choice to put in your data list. So we're going to put in this list we came up with, which was 27, enter, 27, enter, 28, enter. 20, 226s, 228s, and then 25, 30, 23. Is that right? Okay. 
So there's our. Uh -oh. Right, that would be great, wouldn't it? Okay, so make sure I got them right. 27, 27, 28, 26, 26, oh right, that's okay, 28, 28, 25, 30, 23. And now you go back to the, so now you got that list in, your list of data in list one, go back to stat, and go to calculate, and then that very first choice, one variable stats, one variable stats, enter. We want list one. We don't have a frequency list. We just want to do the one variable stats on list one. So just leave frequency list blank and then go down to calculate and hit enter. Okay, how do we do? So we got a mean of 26.8. And then our standard deviation is the F. We want the S one. We'll understand. Talk about the difference between these two out of the time, but um, pretty close 1.9, 1.8, something like that. So, what if we wanted to adjust it? If we wanted to adjust the data set, what would we do to the data values to do, to do better to get the mean and standard deviation that we wanted? What could we do? So, our mean was a little bit too low and our standard deviation was a little bit too high so what could we do to the to a couple of the data values to make them closer to what we wanted what's that no we need 10 data we need 10 boxes of candy bring one of the lower numbers up a little bit change the 23 to 24 then the mean would go up and would the standard deviation would go up or down the lower, we want to, we're going to take a lower data value and move it towards the mean. So we're all very, is our variability going up or down? It's going down, right? We're moving it towards the mean, so the variability is going down. So that taking a lower value and moving it up would achieve what we want because it would make the mean a little higher and the standard deviation a little lower. Does that make sense to everybody? So we can go back to the list. Let's take that one that was 23, uh, 23. Let's make it 24. And then go back to stat, add it, or uh, calculate. One variable stats, calculate. How do we do? Look at that. So now the mean is almost 27, almost perfect, and our standard deviation is lower, closer to 1.5. Any questions? Thank you. I have a question. Yeah, please. I was wondering if there's any correlation between the data set and bias that if you find it versus if you select the data that came from trial and error. Um, find what? Find the, the mean and the standard deviation. Because you're, you're given the mean and standard deviation. Well, sorry, it's find the different values. But that doesn't really make sense. The data values exist in the world, and they're all they're different. Every time you take a sample of ten boxes, you're going to give a different sample. So it doesn't really make sense that there'd be a formula that would create it. So so it's the whole point of the exercise is to really understand mean and standard deviation, and so that's about you you coming up with it yourself. That's the whole point. That's the whole point. Can you can you generate it because you understand what the what the results should be? So that, that's the point of the, the problem. Do you want us to get it right on the money? Or no, it's just the, the idea. So just on, just the idea of it. Okay. So if you're if you're not done, if you didn't finish number six, it's okay. Don't I, I want? We need to go on to new stuff. But I just wanted to give you a, a flavor of the type of thinking you're going to need for the exam because it's not always reflected in the homework. Okay. Any other questions on this sheet? So we, we, we don't want to just know how to use stat crunch to get a standard deviation. We want to really understand what a standard deviation is. It's giving us, oh, not for like a while, but I just, I didn't want to go on, you know, I wanted, while we were working on this stuff, I wanted to give you a flavor of 
for what it would be like for this stuff. But the exam is like mid-February. Yeah. Okay, last chance. Questions on this? Okay, so new stuff. So, so we see that like the mean and standard deviation kind of are, um, they go together in making this range, right? So, so we, we center it on the mean and then we make these ranges with the standard deviation to get, a, to get a, an idea of what the, what the data set is like. So now we want to talk about something similar with the median. So what if we were to use the median and we wanted to make a visualization of the whole data set? Let's, we're going to do that. So when you, when you use the mean, you use standard deviations. So what about when you use the median to get a, a visual of the distribution? Okay, so that's the section 3.3. So, uh, like I said, when we've got the mean, we use standard deviations to get a, a visual of the data set. When you use the median, you use this thing called the five number summary and, a, and box plots. Okay, so let's talk about that. So, quartiles. First thing we do is quartile. So what happens is we, after we determine the median, we look at the lower half of the data set, right? The median splits the data set right into two equal pieces, right? So then we look at the lower half of the data set, and we find the median of that. That's called the first quartile. So the first quartile is the median of the data set that lies below the median. So it's like, okay, so we've split the data set in half. Now we're going to come to the bottom half and split it in half again. That's called the first quartile. Okay, and the second quartile is you take the top half of the data set and you find the median of that. So it's like we're so we keep we're splitting the we keep splitting the data into halves. Okay, so that we got the top half of the data set, we split it in half again. That's called the second quartile. Sorry, the second quartile is the median. That's called the third quartile. The third quartile is when you take the top half of the data set and split it in half. Okay, don't write this down word for word. This should just make sense, right? This should, this should just make sense. Okay, then the interquartile range is the difference between the first and third quartiles. Okay, so you'll have the median, which is Q2, and then you're going to have the max and the min, data values. And so here's the bottom half of the data. The median of that is quartile one. The median of the top half of the data is quartile three, the third quartile. So what, if the interquartile range, this is the interquartile range right here. This distance across the data set is the interquartile range. What percent of the data lies in the interquartile range. What percent of the data lies in the interquartile range? 68%. Agree with that? Let's do it again. The median is what, what does the median mean? What percent of the data lies to the right? And what percent of the data lies to the left? Okay, and so now we do, how do we do quartile one? We take this lower 50% of the data and we do what? Cut it, in half. cut it in half. And then we do the upper half of the data, we cut it in half and put so, so that half of the data is on either side of, of the, so going back to the IQR, is it 68% of the data? What percent of the data is in the interquartile range? 50, right? 50, because these are all 25% of the data. 25% here, 25% here. 25% here, etc. So the interquartile range has 50% of the data. Make sense? Because this is all based on medians now, not standard deviations. So th this is pretty easy, right? So I'll, I'll get to know how to split the data in half and 
find, find the median, and then you're just you're just splitting all the data up into quarters. That, that's pretty easy. So let's. Um, so then this is what's called the five number summary. What I just wrote on the previous page. The five number summary refers to the minimum data value, quartile one, quartile two, quartile three, and the max. And the me median and quartile two are the same thing. Quartile two and the median are the exact same thing. <clears throat> okay, so why don't you make the five number summary for this data set. This is a weekly, um, this they survey, let's see, looks like they surveyed 20 people, 20 people and asked how many hours of TV did you, did you watch a week or this past week or something? How many hours of TV did you watch? Okay, and this was the results for 20 people. So um, find the five number summary. Is that what I called it? The five number summary? Okay, go. So make the five number summary. And this will just be for your notes. This will just be for your notes. Sixty-six. I think 
Okay, I got it. So start by getting the median. What was the median? Ten. I agree. There. So since it's an even number, there's two middle numbers, right? Thirty and thirty-one. So we take the mean of those, which is thirty point five. So Q two is thirty point five. Okay, first quartile, 10 in the lower half, so what's the middle value? 2 middle values again, right? 5 and 6. First quartile, 23, right? Upper half, 10 data values, so it's going to be, there's two middle values, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 35 and 38 are the middle values of the top half. So is that 36.5? And the max and min are easy. Min is just the lowest. And the max is the highest. So that's our five number summary. That's our five number summary. Min, quartile one, is the median of the lower half of the data. Quartile two is the median. Quartile three is the median of the upper half. And then the max. So it would be 5, 23, 30.5, 36.5, and 60. 66, sorry, lost my, yeah, 66. Okay. Questions on that? Okay, so what do we see here? So, um, we'll just, we'll go on and then we'll, we'll, we'll kind of talk about this. Any questions on that? Everyone got it? Make sense? Okay, so then there's this other thing called the lower and upper limits, okay? The lower limit is the value of quartile 1 minus 1 1.5 of the interquartile range. So uh, let's write down our um, five-number summary again. Tell me what, what it was again. 5, 23, 30.5. So there's this thing that, that you calculate called the lower limit. The lower limit is Q1 minus 1 1.5 of the interquartile range. So we're going to need that. What is our interquartile range? Q3 minus Q1. Right. It's the, it's the span of the data from, from it's this middle 50%, right? It says 50% of the data from 23 to 36.5. So what is that? 13.5? So we know that 50% of the data is in a range of 13.5 hours around the mean, around the median, right? 50% of the data lies around the median with a range of 13.5 uh, hours of watching television. Okay, so now this lower limit for this data set would be Q123 minus 1.5 times that. So what's the lower limit? 2.75. So we got a lower limit of 2.75. Someone else get that? Okay, and then upper limit of. So you're going to take Q3, 36.5, and add 1.5 of this interquartile range. And what's that? Did 
50 or 60 something? Anyone got it? Just shout it out. What is it? Someone else get that? Someone else got that? Okay, good. So what the point of the lower and upper limits are is to snuff, uh, sniff out outliers, okay? To sniff out outliers. These, these are based on where should the, given this interquartile range of 13.5, where should all the data, where should it lie? So that there's no, there's no outliers, okay? So if you look down here, the lower limit, 2.75, it's less than the min. So what does that say about the min? Is it an outlier or not? No, the min is, is inside that. See, the min is inside that, so it's okay. So the, the lower limit for non-outlying data is 2.75. Our lowest is 5, so it's fine. Makes sense. Okay, and then what about, so the upper limit for, for non-outlying data is 56.75. What about the 66 then? Potential outlier, okay? So it's a potential outlier. So this lower and upper limits are limits for non-outliers. Non-outliers, right? So this like, as long as you're within the upper and lower limit, th that's not an outlier of the data. But if you're outside those, now we're thinking, talking about potential outlier. So this 66 potential outlier. So from all this information, we call we make what's called a box plot or box and whiskers plot. So the box is the interquartile range. Okay, so we've got the median. What was our median? So let's let's do a scale here. So we got uh, 0, 10, 20, make, make to make a nice even scale here, 40, 50, 60, 70. So there's our scale. So where was our median? Our median was 30.5, right there. It's our median. And then our first quartile, 23, right here. So 23, 30.5. And then our third quartile was 36.5, right about here. So this is the box part. The box part shows the interquartile range. 50% of the data falls in the box. Good so far? So this is Q1, Q2, Q3. The box shows the interquartile range. 50% of the data falls in that box. Okay, now the, the lowest quartile and the highest quartile of values, then we're either going to use the lower limit or the, so, uh, we're going to use the limits or the min or the max, depending on, we don't want to include outliers. So for the, on the, on the low side, we didn't have any outliers, so we're going to stretch our whisker all the way to the lower limit. So... Or I'm sorry, to the min, to the min, okay? Because the min is the, that's the lowest data value. So we're going to go right here to the min. And we're going to make this just straight line, which is like a whisker. And then that's the min, which is five. So there's no data that's below five. So we're not going to use the lower limit 2.75 because five is the lowest data value. There's no data below five. 
But on the upper side, we don't want to go all the way to 66 because we're thinking that's a potential outlier. That, and we kind of want to exclude that from, from the data set. So we want to show it, but we don't want it to be um, considered nor a normal data value. Okay, so for the upper side, then we're going to use the upper limit. So we're going to go up to 56.75, like this. So on this side, we use the min, because there is no data values lower than that. But on this side, we're going to use the upper limit, because this 66, was there, was there one or two above 56.75? Go back to the list of data. Just one, okay, just that one, okay? So we're gonna go up to the upper limit here at 56.75. And then we're gonna show the, the outlier with a dot, or like an asterisk. 66. Okay, so when you make these plots, the box will never, it'll always be from quartile one to quartile three, always, okay? That'll always be the interquartile range showing 50% of the data. What changes from plot to plot is where you're gonna extend these whiskers out to. They're either gonna extend out to the min or max or the upper or lower limit, depending on if you have potential outliers or not. If you have potential outlier, you're only gonna go up to the upper limit or down to the lower limit, whatever applies. If you don't have a potential outlier on a given side, then you're going to go all the way to the min or all the way to the max. So that, so that lower and upper limit is kind of setting bounds on non-outlying data. And that's what we want to show with the Vasco box and whiskers plot, non-outlying data. Okay. Does it make sense? Do you follow that? So this is like um, the what we did with the mean and the standard deviation ranges. Now this is now this is if you use the median to do the same kind of thing where we're showing what the, the data distribution is like, but now this is using the median. So this is the, the comparable picture to what we did with the three standard deviation ranges, but based on the median now. Can I erase the screen? Anybody have a question? Okay, so uh, this is just going through the um, what we just did in that example, just in verbally. So this will be on the video if you want to pause the video and write this down. But here, here's here's a nicer version of what we did. So uh, we started with the. Quartiles, we made the box, and then we saw that. <coughs> what was the thing? What was the. Okay, so I guess I was wrong. What was the next lowest um, data value under 66? 43. 43? Okay, so I was wrong. So you don't, you, you don't use the upper and lower limits to, to make your plot. You always use data values to make the plot. See this? So I was wrong. You don't, you don't take it out to the upper limit. You take it out to the, these are data, always data values. So I apologize. So instead of, instead of going out to the upper limit, you go out to, to the, the last data value that's not an outlier. Okay, so it's this is five. That was the data value, and what was it? Forty-three. Forty-three. <clears throat> Do you see what happened? Does it make sense now? No. Okay, go back. But this is this is a little better anyway, right? So it's your your box, the 
the ends of the whiskers, what they call the adjacent values, will always be the, la the outermost data values that are not outliers. The outermost data values that are not outliers. So 5 and 43, and there's 66. Why was it a potential outlier? Because it was outside of the upper limit. So the upper and lower limits, they only help you identify potential outliers. You don't use them in the, in the box and whiskers plot. You don't use them. You, you use the highest and lowest non-outlying data to make those the ends of those whiskers. Okay. Questions on that? Do you always have to label the outlier? Yeah, you should include it. Okay. Yeah. Wherever there's an outlier, there could be there could be one or two. Uh, Maybe three. Yeah, use an asterisk and show it. Okay. All right, so let's do, I'm going to show you another example. So um, So here's an example from So I still haven't gotten my, uh, my uh, the, what's that thing called, the stat, stat crunch to work, but I can show you last, last year's video, okay, it works just as well. So here's an here's um, example of a data set. We could go up here and do the uh, stat crunch. All right, and so notice in the notice down here, when we did this uh, variable one and we just did the basics, uh, we did the stat and you did the the basic one one variable statistics. Yeah. Right, because I had it on his computer. Remember, it doesn't. I, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, so email me if something like that happens. You can just email me and be like, what happened, and, you know? Yeah, because so I, I want you to get all the points in the homework. So I or check my email often. So if, you, if you've got an issue, just email me. But in class, what happened was my stack crunch didn't work. So we had him, he brought up his computer, and everyone was looking at the screen, but it didn't get recorded because it wasn't my computer. Okay, so uh, if you notice now, down here, uh, all that stuff, Q1, we didn't look at it before because we hadn't gotten to it yet, but all those things over here are there. Q1, Q2, Q3, interquartile range, they're all there to choose. Put them over here on this side, and then when you do the, when you run the compute the statistics, then they'll come up. So here I did it for that data set that I showed you, and notice, here they are. Min, max, Q1, Q3, interquartile range. Okay, so all that stuff that we didn't, that it's there, now that we know what it means. Okay, so what I want you to do is, I want you to make the five number summary, and, uh, you know, can we do the box and whiskers plot? Yeah, so what we'll do is, make, do the five number summary, find the, uh, and we're going to make the, you're going to make the plot. Do this on the back of your green sheet there. And I'll give you a good view that shows all the data so that you can make the, the box plot. I think that shows it. So write out the five number summary and then make the Make the box plot on the back of your green sheet. And this is the last data value here, 27. That's the last data value right there. So here are your data values so you can find the potential outliers. You can work together.
Mm-hmm. And I'll highlight some particularly low and high data values so you can kind of, it'll help you go a little faster. That's what it turns out to be. That's what it is.